Yes, I was lucky enough to get the chance to take a look behind the scenes on a DTM weekend. Audi driver Mike Rockenfeller took plenty of extra time for me at the US Speedway Lausitz. Thanks a lot for that, Mike. Hi. Hi, I'm Steffi. I work for Scheffler. I heard you get to spend a weekend with me here at Euro Speedway Lausitz. I'm a total DTM fan and a fan of yours. And now I get the chance to go with you. Yes, perfect. And I think we should get going to make our first appointment. There's a press conference at 2. You'd best come with me. Our day started off with a press conference. After all, good PR work is a must for a race driver. But sure, there were some things that remain confidential. The Phoenix team's truck that Mike Rockenfeller and Timo Scheider share between themselves is changing room, resting area and meeting room all in one. Only a few people are allowed in here as important issues are discussed before and after the race. Free practice is going to start in about 10 minutes, that means I'm still fairly relaxed. I'm going to go change and I'll see you in the pit in a minute. Okay, see you then. See you, bye. I was really surprised to see how much of a routine matter all this was. It was downright comfortable in the pit, no hurry even just a few minutes to go before the start of the training session. Everyone seemed to know exactly what to do and when, and every mechanic knows his own bit of the car. Even when Rocky comes into the pit, they all remain calm, cool and collective. He jumps elegantly into the car and then on command the heating nets are drawn from the slicks and the wheels are mounted. Shortly afterwards, the V8 roars to life, a real goosebumps moment, and off Rocky goes. With bated breath, I follow the round on the monitors in the pit. As soon as Rocky is back, the evaluation of the training session begins. I have the opportunity to talk with Chief Mechanic Booster. What's really special about this car is that everything is made from carbon. This door is really, really light. It only weighs a few kilos. Can I hold it? Yes, sure. Yes, it's fairly lightweight. Really lightweight. You could never lift up a door from a regular Audi with one hand like that. The director of the Phoenix team is Ernst Moser, an experienced technician who has been affiliated with the DTM since back in 1988 and joined Phoenix team in 2000. I asked him who decides when pit stops should be done. Often I decide or we decide as a team. There is a group in the communication box and the automotive engineer and a strategy engineer are part of it too. In addition, we use software. That's how we decide together when to do the pit stop. Then there's another highlight in store for me. The journey in the so-called race taxi. Soon I will know what it feels like to be catapulted along the circuit and round bands by 460 horsepowers of sheer power. From 0 to 100 in just 3 seconds? Am I in a good physical and mental condition? I think so. At least, that's what I've just confirmed with my signature. So I'd done the racing overall and put my helmet on. Somehow managed to scramble into the car and buckle up. For two laps, I am the co-pilot in the Audi RS5 DTM. The driver is Manuel Reuter. My seating position is extremely low and I'm strapped in so tightly that I can hardly breathe. My first look forwards is somewhat unsettling. I can hardly see anything of where we're going. It's mostly the dashboard. Manuel presses the starter button. It is loud, but not as loud as expected. My helmet dampens the noise, but not the vibrations. However, there's no time for second thoughts. Manuel catapults us towards a pit wall and then onto the track. Amazing! I'm thrust back hard into the bucket seat. Breaking in the curve, I'm thrown forwards, then to the side. Now I know why I'm so firmly buckled in. But for Manuel, it seems to be just second nature. He drives the two laps out of habit. And then the fun is over already. What a shame. I would have loved to go on a third lap. I just got out of the racing taxi and I have to say that was really cool. The first shock I got was how much the seat vibrated. Somehow I wasn't expecting that. And the front dashboard is very high, so you don't see what's coming at you. And taking those curves with the gas pedal floor really sucks you into your seat. But altogether, it was fantastic. <laughs>